gentlemen, our first panel discussion today is the CEO's session entitled The Islamic Financial Markets Today, Asia and Beyond. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to invite the following panelists to take to the stage. First of all, Dr. Zukri Samad, Managing Director, Bank Islam Malaysia. Mr. Badli Shah Abdul Ghani, Chief Executive Officer of CIMB Islamic. Mr. Stephen Choi, President and Chief Executive Officer, Jagamas. Jacques Tripon, the Global Head of Islamic Banking, BNP Paribas, GCC. Muhammad Rashdan, Muhammad Yusuf, the Chief Executive Officer and Director of Maybank Investment Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome them with a round of applause. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim again. All right, uh, gentlemen, here we are. We have the interesting problem in front of us today. We'd really like to have your insights about what the international crisis has meant to Islamic finance, the field, and what are the ways forward? What are some of the latest developments in the market from your perspective? And uh, if I might, maybe we'll start uh, far away from Danny and work our way down the panel a quick two or three words on the issues. Right. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Interestingly, um, yes, uh, the often dreaded word of the global world financial crisis. So I'm not going to mention that much today, except for the fact that uh, we have been seeing these green shoots um, emerging uh, in these markets. I just like to say that uh, alhamdulillah uh, in the last two to three months uh, we have had significant interest in terms of deal pipeline uh, emerging uh, from the issuer's standpoint. There's a considerable interest to raise uh, finance, especially in Sukuk. Uh, I like to also give a bit of uh, perspective in terms of the Malaysian debt capital markets. Uh, just after the last financial crisis, that's around the year 2000, um, our PDS or private debt security market was about uh, 130 billion uh, worth and 15% of that was Islamic. Uh, now there's about 235 billion worth of bonds outstanding and two-thirds of that is Islamic. It's a significant shift uh, in the favor in the area of Islamic which is very favorable. Uh, and in the last few months, there has been significant interest. Uh, and I must say, uh, all our engines are working at full steam to hopefully meet the requirements uh, of this issue. So uh, we certainly see uh, those green shoots emerging. And, and hopefully with the recent pronouncements of liberalization for our Malaysian capital markets, I think that bodes the future well. Very good. Uh, Jacques, a view from the Gulf where the water is not entirely calm, I understand. Well, I wish I could answer to your, to your question clearly. Um, I'm not sure we have seen the worst yet, uh, but uh, in the GCC we see some, uh, some uh, we have some hopes. And uh, well, starting with the price of the uh, crude oil at uh, 75, 60, 70 uh, dollars uh, a barrel, the, uh, the money is coming back to the region. Uh, on top of that, uh, we have seen uh, two uh, Sukuk issues by, uh, by uh, sovereign states, um, Bahrain, first of all, and uh, Ras al Cayman. It was very well received by the market. Um, so, really, some good hopes to see uh, uh, the Sukuk market uh, uh, to, to, uh, to be born again. Um, IDB is coming to the market also, uh, the Islamic Development Bank is, uh, is coming back to the market uh, in, uh, in September, the roadshow will be in September, and uh, well, it's uh, very nice to see also a supranational coming to the market. Um, unfortunately, uh, as you know, in, this, uh, in the GCC we have some bad news on, on more on the family business. Uh, well, I wish I know what's going on. Uh, we've seen the in the coming months. But as mentioned by Dr. Alsha, a lot of opportunities. I mean, we have to look at, at, at opportunities, and I think uh, Islamic finance has still a lot of opportunities in the 
in, in the GCC. Okay. Stephen, your insights? Well, uh, very good morning to all. Uh, basically, I think the uh, Sukkot market is just as affected as the conventional market. But nevertheless, I think the, uh, as you can see, even in the Malaysian market, uh, no matter how badly uh, the market is affected, uh, you can see that Sukuk issuance, uh, looking at it from the issuer's perspective, there's still uh, quite a number of issues. Uh, if you look at, uh, like us, for instance, we're still issuing. We have uh, to date issued about almost $3 billion uh, worth of conventional uh, of Islamic versus you know 3.5 in the whole of last year. So despite the fact that uh, uh, the market is down, we still see the Suko market uh, growing pretty strong. Uh, however, I think one thing we need to know is that at the moment we are not out of the woods. Uh, there is still um, a bit of uh, the heartache that we go through. But nevertheless, I think the uh, Islamic financing and Islamic market uh, will go through that phase. And it is also a good time to test out the, uh, the what you call the strength of the uh, Islamic products and the sukuks that are out there. So basically, I think uh, it will stand the test of time and uh, we will probably see more issuance as we have seen in even some of the countries that have never issued and uh, places like uh, Indonesia and I think Singapore has come out. And hopefully we just talked earlier in the morning that we probably see something coming out from Hong Kong at some stage. Madly Shah, here you are. You've been put on the hot spot uh, structuring. How are you going to stand up with all the excellent deals you've worked on? Maintaining? Moving forward well? Well, I think as far as the uh, structuring of Sukuk is concerned, um, most of the Sukuk that are done in Malaysia are fairly tested in the court system. Um, so there is very much great certainty in terms of how uh, transactions are well guarded. Uh, from a documentation perspective. Um, recently, the Central Bank of Malaysia uh, is looking at having uh, Parliament pass a new law uh, that compels the court uh, to follow uh, the decision of the Sharia Advisory Council of the Central Bank. So this is a law that is going to be passed by Parliament. Uh, so that creates a little bit more certainty uh, for the longer term. In general, as far as the industry is concerned, um, as Stephen mentioned and Jack similarly mentioned, uh, the, 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 the industry is not uh, uh, totally immune uh, from uh, the financial and economic crisis. We are equally affected, albeit somewhat uh, better uh, in terms of our capacity to withstand and, and manage the crisis. Uh, we, the industry as a whole, is not that sophisticated enough to have been involved in the CDOs and fiasco and whatever not that was found in the U.S. Therefore, we were spared uh, that uh, particular uh, crisis. Um, I have said earlier in the year, notwithstanding, that several Islamic banks would fail um, in, in several parts of the world, and we are seeing uh, some of those uh, coming into the news. Uh, when, when I first mentioned it, of course, I got phone calls from some of my friends in the GCC and, and somewhere else. You cannot be saying that Islamic banks will be failing and things like that. But facts are facts. Uh, we uh, need to have effective regulatory framework for this industry. Uh, as a keynote speaker mentioned, we are developing a broader uh, financial system uh, that encompasses a lot of activities that requires appropriate and sufficient regulatory framework. Um, so at the end of the day, what the crisis has taught us is um, we must be regulated, uh, whether we like it or not. And I think uh, a good lesson uh, for people to take away is uh, how the industry has been able to prosper uh, in Malaysia under a very, very co co comprehensive and effective regulatory framework. Uh, I think one of the best things for this event being done in this country or in this city is that uh, participants would be able, uh, before they go off, back to their respective jurisdiction to actually uh, find out and learn about how 
that regulatory framework has been done in this country. I'll stop there. Okay. Dr. Zukri, how is uh, what I believe is the largest